As part of our series of wiring within conduit, I said we'd take a closer look at the consumer unit and its parts and how to build it up. Because often at college, you don't get it already assembled. This garage board came to me already built up. So let's look at the first thing, this being effectively the means of isolation for the consumer unit. And we're probably used to seeing a linked main switch or sometimes called a double pole switch in order to isolate the board. And this works as that purpose, but it also is an RCD. So this is an RCCB, residual current circuit breaker. And it's rated at 30 milliamps. So it will offer additional protection for the two circuits that you can wire from it. And it's also an AC type. And we know how we're trying to move away from AC now to the A type RCD as a minimum. And the switching value or the value rating of the actual device is 63 amps. So we often talk about, don't we, a 100 amp main switch. Well, this switch here mechanism is up to 63 amps. Rate of 30 milliamps to the RCD protection for earth leakage and is an AC type. Then we can choose whichever breakers we want to accompany it. And the ones that came with this were B16 and a B6. And they were already populated within the board, but we're going to fit those into position. So we've got our DIN rail at the back here, of which we're going to clip these breakers onto. And if we look here, by pulling this tab down to take them off, which you don't need to do when you put it on, it will clip, this section here will clip onto the DIN rail for both the breakers. So we're going to hook those on. We're going to start off by hooking on the 16 amp one. General practice is the largest one nearest the main switch. That may change over time the thinking behind that, but we're going to put the 16 amp one first and we're going to hook it on the back. So it goes on the back of the dim rail first. So I'm going to hook this section on first, back of the dim rail on, and then we're just going to clip it down by pressing that into position. So we've hooked it in. If we wanted to get it back out, it's a simple process of levering against here and you feel that's clicked into position and then we can just take it back off. So we can see that clips down onto our DIN rail on the back. So we're in at the top first, clip down and then we just press our button down and we've locked our 16 amp type B circuit breaker into position. Exactly the same process now for the B6. It's obviously locked back, so we've pulled it back. I'm gonna clip it onto the DIN rail and then just lock it into position. So those are now connected. This is, the, this is the one everyone misses off at college, especially when you're learning early on, is obviously this is called a bus bar, bus bar, B-U-S bar, bus bar. And it's got the plastic coating on to stop you from touching the live parts. And that needs to be present. Often in colleges that goes missing and people still fit them. Well, you shouldn't be because you've got all that copper exposed, which will be connected to the line conductor. So make sure that's in position. You notice on this style, one is slightly larger than the other two. This is the one that goes into the RCCB. So we've got to open up that screw. So if we open up the cage clamp, which is under here, in order that we can fit it. So we've opened that one up. If I just pop a breaker back out again, so you can have a look at these, you can see also you should open out the bottom of those uh, cage clamps as well for the same connection. See, that's opening up. So it's important they're open. So I'm gonna put that one back in. I'll open up the six amp one as well. Once they're opened, they will be able to take the bus bar. So our bus bar goes into position. I need to fit it in and go all the way into position and hold it. And now I should feel it come up and connect to those. So we're gonna connect that one. I'm not gonna do it super tight. I'm just gonna tighten the screw down, but not tight. So that's firm but not tight and we're making sure that, that cage clamp closes up so it closes up onto the bus bar we don't want to miss the bus bar in any way and it's a case of sometimes having to bend down and have a really good look just to check that you haven't missed those connections on the base of there so these connections under here have caught that bus bar so that's in position now and you notice we've only got the bus bar across this connection here which is where the line comes in at the top of the rccb so the line connection will come in there so in other words the tail will come in from the mains end or our supply cable comes in so our line connection comes in passes through our rccb and will liven up the bottom here when it's energized so when we're in that position there on it will bring the line connection through and liven up this bus bar here. What does happen at colleges is people tend to put it across these two and then the first one. If you were to do that, obviously you'd have the neutral line and this connection here all connected together, you'd have a dead short. So make sure it's only in connected in the line section here. So 
and you see the neutral would come into here, the neutral comes through the RCCB, through to here, it comes around here and then is connected into my neutral bar at the top. So it's important that this bus bar here is connected across the line and then the bottom of the two breakers where also it connects to the line section. So when these are on, the electrical energy comes, passes through the um, circuit breakers and out the outgoing circuits. So that's what we've got there. So that's the bus bar fitted, but it's not tight yet. None of these are tightened up yet. We're gonna dress our cables in next. These are PVC singles and I showed in a previous video how tricky these are to make them look neat. You'll have considerably more time to make a good job at college than I do. And I also did it upside down. So we're gonna connect these. We're gonna connect the neutral into our neutral bar, our CPC into our earth bar, and our line connection is gonna go into the top of our six amp MCB. So it's a type B six amp MCB is where our connection is going to be. I'll probably do a later one where we we'll use a RCBO, which is slightly different, but this is just using effectively one MCB for our outgoing circuit. So that means we've got our neutral and our CPC connections away from the device. RCBOs have the neutral and the line connection from the circuit in the top of them. So if you're using RCBOs at college or out in the industry, the connections are slightly different. But at college, you're likely to be using just an MCB. So it doesn't matter which ones we start with. Let's start with a CPC. It's in single, so it's tricky to get it dressed correctly round. And we've got to work out which one of these connections we're going in. Three, two, one, and E. E would be for my incoming earthing conductor. And then I've got one, two, and three. So here, we class this here, this 16 amp as circuit number one, and this would be circuit number two. So we work from our main switch, so counting circuits one, two, and so on as we work our way down. So we know if we're, say, installing the lighting circuit, which we're simulating here with these single cables, is that we're going to be in circuit number two for us. It could be in any way number within your consumer unit, and you need to match the way for the breaker against the main switch, so one, two, against all the other connections. So we're gonna be using number two here. It's super important when you're in singles, because obviously in twin and CPC or twin and earth cables, the cables are all kept together in the gray outer sheathing or white outer sheathing. With singles, imagine disconnecting a circuit and there was 10 or 11 circuits in a consumer unit and all of a sudden you've got to find which neutral, which line and which CPC relate to each other. So let's keep them ordered. And often people put numbers on these as well. So this would have a little number two on it. And these also would have number twos on them. So you roll them on as ringlet connections as well. So people can see they're identified by number. I've done that in other videos as well, but we're just gonna make our connections. We're gonna try and make these as neat as we possibly can. It's not easy being in singles. So if I come, I'm just gonna loop it around so I've got a little bit extra. I wanna cut it off about there. I'm gonna strip these cables back and then we're gonna twist the ends together. So if I strip that one back, we can see we've exposed the strands of our class two conductor, and then we're gonna to need to twist these round. So make these super tight. Students often give up before they get them nice and tight. This is taking some time. And then I'm gonna trim it back. And I'm gonna just twist it again. And then I'm gonna double that over. You can see the size of the termination. It's quite big, so I'm probably gonna be comfortable with that as a doubling over length. So almost twice as long as the earth bar. Slightly less than half. And I'll fold it against my pliers. And then I'm gonna bend that end over. And we've got a nice doubled over end. And then we're gonna pop that into number two. I like it to lay flat. So rather than being side on, I'm gonna lay it flat so my screw comes down and penetrates on top of it. I'm only gonna do this again loosely. So I back off number two. Just gonna do this loosely because we are gonna return them to the required torque setting towards the end of the video. So I'm gonna just tighten that one down just so it holds. And there we go, so that's in position. I'm just gonna dress that as best I can out of the way. So there we go, so we've got a little bit of extra on it and we'll just dress that round like that. It could be that you wanted to think, hang on, I wanted to bring it more this way. So I could have, could have looped it round this way to shorten it across a bit. The choice is yours on how you wanna dress it. I'll try and get it a little bit straighter. And there we go, our CPC is connected to number two. Our neutral connection is gonna go into number two of the neutral. So again, it's how we're gonna make that look reasonably neat. We're gonna bring it round like so. It is tricky in singles. I proved last time I couldn't do it brilliantly. Do you wanna follow something like the similar pattern? Do you wanna follow something like that? 
but then come straight out the other end. You want to come out like that. I don't know, it's however you fancy doing it in order to get it neat. I'm just going to straighten it out. I'm going to just bring it down slightly and then I'm going to bring it into this corner. I'm going to bring it down to there. So I'm going to go for there roughly on my length. Just time I strip it with pliers, just bite into the PVC. You notice where my thumb goes and I just pull away. So I'm just going to push it away from my thumb. So just gently bite around the PVC and then just push away. We got rid of that, haven't damaged any of the copper. If at any point you lose one of the strands, you'll need to strip it back. You need to cut it off and go again. We can't reduce the cross-sectional area at termination point. So twist it nice and tight, trim it back, twist again, take that doubling over, take your time to make a nice neat connection. There we go. And then we're gonna pop our neutral in, number two again. So I'm just gonna back off number two. I'm going to lay it flat, so it's laid flat, so it gets into my termination like there. And then just gently screw it down at the minute before we torque it up to the required torque setting, so that's held into position. Again, like I said before, it is tricky to make these look super neat. I have only got one circuit, so I'm going to go with, with that as, as my connections. So I've got a little bit of extra at the top, and now it's my line connection now. Well, I could just drop it straight in the top. But if I make an error on terminating it, I can't shorten it. You can rewire it because it's in conduit, which is handy. But we always like to leave a little bit extra at terminating point. Not going to use breaker number one. I'm using breaker number two because this is how it's configured when I got it. You might find at college you've only got one breaker, in which case it goes in number one. And it would be uh, position number one for the neutral and one for the CPC. But as I've just, uh, added the extra breaker in position, we're going to be in number two. So it's how do we do this? I'm going to just probably try and dress it something like that. So we come down the side and we go in. We're going to double that one over. Again, just push away. And then we're going to twist these nice and tight. And once we've got them nice and tight, we're going to make a decision on how big the termination needs to be. If you're unsure, put it in singularly. So if we just get that one, I trim it back. If I now just drop it into position, Got to back off my screw. I just back this screw off to open up my cage clamp at the back. So that's opening it up. And if I push it into position there, look how much copper we've got showing. Okay, so we go in. So that's how much copper. Is that roughly half? Is that half what's gone in? It pretty much is. And half showing. So in that case, if I double it over from there, we should find that it's the right depth of termination. So take it, fold it over. And I'm going to keep it flat again. So from that position, I want to keep it flat. So again, that's flat down. It's got a clamp in here. I'm going to go into that clamp. I'm looking down it. So I'm checking that I've got it opened up and I have. So we can just see in there, if you just look around there, you can see that clades clamp is open. I'm just going to push my cable in. I'm going to keep it flat. And then I'm going to tighten it up. So I haven't missed that connection. I know it's tricky for you to see on the camera, but if you're working in a college setting, you'll know what I mean. So there we go. So I'm just gonna dress this round a little bit, try and make it look a little bit better. As I always say, singles are tricky. So there we go. We've got those all connected up reasonably neatly now, but we haven't returned any of our screws to the required manufacturer's torque setting. So if we look at the instructions and we look at the torque uh, table it gives us here, it says for the RCD, which they're talking about this here, the RCD, you must be up at 2.5 Newton meters of torque. At the moment, we haven't got our tails connected or anything. So we're not gonna worry about that one for the time being. MCB, miniature circuit breaker. We've used a six amp one here. It says you can go up to 16 millimeter squared cable. We use 1.5 and it's 2.5 Newton meters of torque. And then our earth and neutral bars are all the same those terminals they are two newton meters so these here are two and the top of there is 2.5 newton meters of torque and it's vitally important you return them to the required torque setting from the manufacturer so in order to do so you're going to need a torque screwdriver let's start off by changing the torque for 2.5 so if we look in that window there we can see we're at two at the minute so let's let's change that if we go this way We've gone to 2.2, .2, then we go to 2.4, 
there. I know it's tricky for you to see. So we're actually going to be between windows. So I'll go for the next one. That will be 2.6 newton meters of torque. So I need to rotate it back until I'm in a blank window on this style of screwdriver, and that would be at 2.5 newton meters of torque. Use the adjusting bar to do so. I'll return the rest of my screwdriver handle into position. If I unlock this, you take a look at that head. That's different than a posi head. That's called a slotted posi head. Okay, so that's a slotted posi. And that's what we're gonna to need to return these screws correctly. So if we look at the heads in there, you can see you've got both the posi and a slot in the screw. And we're gonna use the appropriate slotted posi number two in order to connect those together. So let's put that into position. We drop it into there, and for this style of screwdriver, we need to lock it off. So I've pushed that up, and that's locked the um, slotted posi two into position. I've gone top of the screw, which was only done gently with a screwdriver. And now what I've got to do is get it tight. I need to push down quite firmly with my screwdriver and here one click. When I've clicked, I've got to the required torque setting. So there we go, we're tightening. We're still tightening and I'm listening for one click. There we go. So that is at 2.5 Newton meters of torque. And that terminal is exactly what the manufacturer requires for the torque setting. Got to drop these now to two. So let's take this one back out, pull it out, bring in my adjusting bar. And I've now got to change that torque setting. So as I rotate it around, I'm now back at 2.2. And we can see this time, because we're an even number, we're at two there. So if I was between the two, so if I was at 2.2, I wanted 2.1 would be that blank window. When I turn it to there, I'm at two Newton meters of torque. So I use my adjusting bar, bring back in the remaining parts of my screwdriver, make sure this is locked into position, often that unclicks. So make sure that's locked in. And both of these now, need to return into two. So again, I only did it gently to start with, so I feel it going tighter, and then lots of pressure, and we should hear it, there you go, it clicked. And that's all you need to hear is one click. Move on to the CPC and the earth bar. And we go again. There we go, that was harder than I thought. So there we go, so we've got that up to two Newton meters of torque in order to get that one connected. So you might be thinking, that's it, I'm finished. No, it isn't. Remember, we inserted our bus bar down here, and we've got a connection here and here that were already made when it was brought in from the manufacturer. So I'm gonna back this one off using my posi screwdriver. I'm gonna take that one back off, and I'm gonna take this one back off. Okay, so we know that all our terminals within our neutral and earth bar must be up to two Newton meters of torque, which our screwdriver is set to. So we're gonna check first of all the neutral, then we're gonna go down and look at the RCCB at 2.5, and our MCBs were also at 2.5. So what we're saying there is, this one here needs to be returned to two, but any of the connections at the bottom here that we've also looked at need to be returned, as it says there, to 2.5 Newton meters of torque, which is on there as well. So we're gonna stick with the two, so bring back this one, I'm gonna go back to two. So I loosened it off first with a normal screwdriver. There we go, that's at two Newton meters of torque. But once we get to here, these need to be 2.5 again, and we must confirm all the terminations are at the required torque setting. So bring back in my bar, and I've now got to bring it back up. So here we go, that should be 2.4, and the blank window there is 2.5. Bring back in my mechanism, make sure I'm locked off, and then we're gonna do these ones, which we know were loose. So push nice and firmly, click. It's tightening up, one click. It's tightening up, one click. And the last one, one click, there we go. So we have dressed our cables in PVC singles for our lighting circuit. We've fused it at six amps, and it's a type B circuit breaker. Remember, circuit breakers comes in Bs, Cs, and Ds, and we used a type B circuit breaker. We connected our line conductor in the top of our device, and it had a 2.5 Newton meters of torque, as did all the connections at the bottom. And we've returned those to the required setting from a loose position to a tight position. We've then made our connections within our earth and neutral bars, and we used number two connecting points in order to make those connections at two Newton meters of torque because we used breaker position number two. So from the main switch, we had breaker number one, breaker number two, and it carries on, and we chose number two. We've dressed them neatly, 
and we'd be now ready, obviously, to carry out whatever the next stage is. For us, obviously, we're going on to continue on this conduit series. And if you've jumped in at this video and you want to know what we've been up to, and I'll leave a link in the description for the full playlist on wiring within conduit systems. But for terminating a consumer unit, I hope this video has been some help.